Kid. As if eight and a half hours of me wasn't enough, I'm back uh, with another shorter, more condensed, more uh, full of metal video than the uh, live stream we did the other night. I had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, joining if you did. That was killer. Uh, if you ever find yourself in a situation like that on a group phone call or zoom call or stream yard or whatever be aware that you may be more likely to consume whiskey faster than you ever have I went from here to here Whew, boy what still feeling it uh, not gonna lie yeah um, I just, I couldn't think of anything better to do with my time tonight, really, than just bang out another collection update. I got a couple of really cool things in. I got a ton more shit coming in. Why not? Um, you know what? The, the hardest thing, the most time-consuming thing about shooting pretty much any video anymore these days, now that I'm complaining, is picking out what to play in the background. I get, I'm getting so fucking indecisive and like, no, that's not right. I don't want to hear that. I spend fucking 45 minutes to an hour just standing in awe of my fucking records. It's so dumb. So I was just fucking around listening to whatever. Um, and I was just like, no, put that in. Play that. Just stop fucking around and put that in. So there's honestly no reason I played this. I'm not like saying this is amazing or anything. Um, I've had this in my collection for a really long time. And we're listening to it in the background. Um, the band is called Maleficarum. I believe these guys are out of Australia, so explosive action, forgotten hoon. What's up? Um, this is fun. Um, you know, in the wake of the eras of uh, Cannibal Corpse and Deicide and shit like that, this kind of stuff sprung up everywhere. I really always like this artwork. Um, so, yeah, out of Australia. Um... As far as a year on this, eh, 95. Right on. It, it's okay. Um, it's been a really long time since I listened to it, but now that I'm um, kind of digging through the more like second, third rate cutout bin kind of death metal that has its charm, I thought I would throw it on. And so far, it's got the clicks and the crunches and the the, the uh, that I, that I'm in the mood for. Um, I'll, I'll get into more like why I picked this out once we come across the album that uh, it pertains to. So, um, a couple of these are kind of in a response to um, some of the most meaningful albums that people were doing. Uh, that was fun, and some of the picks that um, people chose were like, man, what the fuck am I doing not owning that? 23 years into collecting fucking records. So, um, I can't actually, I think it was Pat from Ground Zero Salem who was talking about the new Nocturnus AD um, and talking about how he loved the key. But uh, the key is a record I always like, first of all, it's kind of rare. It's kind of hard to find an original copy of, I thought. Um, and I and like, I didn't really have any friends who ever were super huge into Nocturnus. So I just kind of never really got around to it. Um, I heard that it was kind of a weird, kind of challenging sort of record, but you know, I just, I found a copy of it for really cheap on Discogs. Luckily, as far as I can tell, this is legit OG. So um, I'm really happy to have this and I'm really, really excited to have this like gem of an album fall into my lap 23 years into this thing, you know? Um, it's just such an awesome world that we spend so much time in, uh, the metal sphere, if you will. 
Um, just, you know, leaving yourself little gems out there to be picked up later on in life. And then this was, this was so fucking special and so good. It's, it's really, really weird. I like, I guess maybe years and years on, I will maybe figure out a way to come up with some caveats or complaints to it. But I don't give a fuck. I own it. I love it. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on. It is challenging. It is a really, really weird thing. <laughs> Um, I, I can definitely hear elements like, okay, that's where that came from and, and whatnot. Like, I can hear some, like, modern black metal bands are really doing this kind of thing, but, you know, these guys were their first doing it 20 years ago. Um, just adding that, like, a layer of synth that kind of works like bass guitar does to underlie a riff, but kind of give it this more, sandwich it in this kind of, uh, depth and give it more oomph, if you will. Uh, I don't know. It's really, really great. I'm super happy to have picked up a copy of it finally. Um, yeah, this is, this is a real just fucking cornerstone Floridian death metal release for me, and, uh, I wouldn't say I regret having waited so long to pick it up for sure, um, but yeah, it's amazing. It doesn't matter when I picked it up. So another one, uh, two of these are from Marty's video. I'm still waiting on a copy of uh, Gorefest Loss, which I have heard maybe more than these next two, but never really got around to picking up a copy of them. Um, these two releases, and kind of along with Gorefest, I would say, there were just kind of things that made me not pick up their stuff way back when I was getting into metal. There was there was a shit ton of other amazing death metal bands to be getting Black Metal 2 uh, copies of before this. So like I prioritized all that shit before this kind of stuff. And you know, years go by and you just kind of forget about ever bothering to pick up a copy of The Karelian Isthmus by Amorphous. Um, so it's probably been 20 years on since I um, have heard this maybe from friends and whatnot or downloading it or something. Um, this is a Relapse reissue remastered by Scott Hull. Who would think that a member of Anal Cunt would remaster a fucking Amorphous album? Whatever. Um, sounds great. Uh, it's got the Privilege of Evil EP tacked onto the end, which I actually have owned a, owned a copy of for eight or ten years or so. Um, just Am Amorphous were never a band that I liked. Um, when I was first getting into metal, they had just put out like my Cantile, my Cantile, whatever, and like that was my first um, getting my feet wet with the band. And I also remember a horrendous cover of The Doors. Is it Come On Baby Light My Fire? I don't know. I was pretty, I had a good lot of reasons to be turned off by Amorphous. Um, not to mention, like, have you ever heard or seen a band hogging up the album cover art so much with their logo? Anyways, um, this has some killer moments on it, but I am still, like, quite turned off by a lot of the attempts at what they're trying to bring to the table. Um, for a couple of 18 and 19 year old kids, it's, this is a, this is such a leap forward for Finland, and it set them off on a path that would continue to this day. I, I'm surprised that three, maybe four of the original members are still in the band. I thought Amorphous were a band who were just like rotating guys out every couple of years and incestuous with other projects like fucking Nightwish, Swallow the Sun, Insomnium, all that kind of stuff. I don't listen to any of that stuff. And Amorphous are a band like I, I never really listened to. Um, but yeah, th this isn't great, honestly. It, I I wasn't moved by this. There are some, there are some moments on it that are super, super killer where they're trying something really weird. But the rest of it, there's some just really dumb riffs that don't really do anything for me. Um, there's never really any moments where it feels like they're, like I'm sold on the aggression that they're putting forth. I, it just doesn't really do it for me like uh, a good old school death metal record does. Not that it has to be that, but like that's where it falls short to make me fall in love with it like I think a lot of other people have. Um, so, I don't know. That's the Karelian Instance for me. I've listened to it once since I got a copy of it. And just, 
yeah, there's just a lot of these kind of slower plotting kind of moments where they're trying to pull off some sort of inspired melodic harmonies, but they aren't interesting enough to make me go, wow. And, and that's what I feel like a lot of other people are saying about this album, and it's just kind of missing the mark for me. I don't know. I have felt like lately I've been pretty open-minded. I've been listening to a lot of different kind of stuff. I've been uh, buying a lot of older stuff, I guess, lately. Um, but I've been kind of listening to stuff all over the place. I'm not really in a particular niche mood for anything out of the ordinary lately. Um, so, I don't know. I felt like this is as ripe a time as any to be picking up a couple of these classics. Um, next, and this one fared a little bit better with me. A lot better, uh, I'll be honest. We're in Elect Wells with Un by Unleashed. I know, um, you can say this is... But I, I would not disagree with you if you said that there were a hundred death metal albums that didn't deserve to be in my collection before this one. Um, and that's fine. I'm not here for fucking cult points. I'm not here to uh, grandstand for being the first one to like anything. I, I don't give a fuck. Um, Unleashed were a band I didn't really hear a lot of when I was getting into metal because my friends weren't really interested in them either. But um, I think I turn this up a little bit. Um, we used to have this video and we all had copies of it back when we were like 17, 18 and it was like, I believe we bought it at Milwaukee Metal Fest, maybe like 96, 97 or something. And it was like six straight hours of black and death metal videos. Stuff from the Death is Just the Beginning compilations, um, shit like that. There was like Impaled Nazarene, Hypocrisy, just any band who in 1995, 96, uh, had a music video at that time compiled on this tape and it was so killer. I, I think I still have it actually um, And it had before the creation of time on there and I just always thought that was kind of a fun kind of cheesy Kind of thing and we used to just kind of make fun of Johnny Hedlund people the creation of time um, But yeah, I like th This is kind of a cheesy record to me um, and I listened to it today for the first time in a really long time and I, I was instantly reminded of what turns me off about Unleashed. And it's a really like nitpicky kind of thing, but the fact that it is such a pervasive element in this record, it, it, it was like, yeah, I, I remember now why I'm not really into it. The drummer does this beat that for some reason, a lot of that proto death metal kind of turn of the dime, thrash metal to death metal kind of era and I just don't like it. It's it's kind of like a it's in that like tempo, but it's like kind of more of a crust kind of beat. Um, Apollyon from Aura Noir does it relentlessly on the last couple of records, and I'm fucking so tired of it. It just it has this like counterintuitive sort of off time to the way I think of music, anyways, which isn't correct in any way. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but it just makes it. Kind of impossible to fully immerse myself into the riffing and the music that's going on so when it hops back on to like a 2-4 beat or a 4-4 beat or even a blast or whatever you're talking about um those are good parts there's there's some awesome aggressive speedy riffing going on here but most of the time kind of the laid back more default rhythm going on here is this thing that just fucking irritates me uh and it, it kind of keeps me from loving this. This uh, does tack on this And the Laughter Has Died demo. Now, I'm not too well versed enough to know like which of these are nihilist songs or whatever. Um, but yeah, a lot of these, there's a ton of bonus tracks on here. And uh, I listened to a couple songs off of this one. And I actually like this, I think, more than the album. That might be the fucking obstinate prick that in me... Um, Refusing to like an album that a lot of other people do which I'm fucking guilty of I'll be honest um, But I don't know it didn't fare as well as I hoped it would um, Yeah So we got a couple other things in um, I think I have only one more album to get from these guys and I'm done but flesh crawl with soul Skinner um, Pick this up pretty cheap luckily um, Not that this is rare or anything, but this is one of those bands and albums where 
You can find this for like 18 or 15 dollars all day long, but I usually kind of wait around until I find it for maybe like eight, something like that. Just, I might as well, you know, I'm not gonna listen to this often. But this is actually came out in 2001, and this came out right after, if I'm not mistaken, Made of Flesh. Um, and it's just fun. Y'all know Flesh Crawl and their later work isn't amazing as their, certainly not as amazing as their earlier work whatsoever, but um, it's just fun, brutal, fucking knuckle-dragging death metal from Germany. I have yet to check out the new Flesh Crawl. Curious what you guys think is up with that. Would I like it? Let me know. I've got some vinyl here too. So, COVID-19 going crazy. Um, we're not going into stores whatsoever. I've been actually kind of trying to buy more records from anywhere because I know people are needing money. Um, and because I'm a fucking drooling fucking loser who can't stop doing this. So, what a perfect marriage made in heaven. Um, I decided to order a couple of LPs from my local record store. They're offering um, curbside delivery, which I took advantage of. And like, I get it. I know that that is also an additional risk. I'm, I try and be judicious and smart with my and alcohol wipes, disinfectant wipes, and I spray things down. Uh, if I can, I wait a couple of days before actually getting into a package or touching a package. But honestly, if you think about it, someone in some other city packaged up all these albums three days ago and then mailed them to me. So they've been sitting inside of an envelope for three to four days. Um, I feel like I'm being smart enough about it um, at this point. I haven't been wrong yet. But I think it's important to especially support my local record store in this time. Um, so I ordered a couple of LPs, they dropped them off, and that was fucking fun. So I picked up some things that I wouldn't have ordinarily picked up, I guess, but um, I've liked them. This is uh, Petrification, Hollow of the Void. Yeah, another Portland death metal band uh, doing something that isn't all that original, but it's fun and it's killer. This comes on a kind of a bluish you kind of LP reminds me quite a bit of like autopsy a little bit of asphyx kind of stuff it's got some nice kind of um, slower groovy kind of stuff as opposed to like two mold or a lot more brutal and unrelenting um, it's got some more kind of slower mid pace kind of stuff going on and it's a really nice guitar tone on it um, I don't know much about these guys but I just I wasn't surprised to see like oh Portland okay of course that makes sense Sentient Ruin put this out. Um, I don't really, I've never heard of any of these other labels. I don't know if it was like all three of these labels or whatever. Picked that up and then I also decided to pick up an album I was obsessed with in high school before I got into metal. I touched upon this a little bit when I did my meaningful albums. Um, and I've kind of been thinking about doing a follow up to that. First of all, there were meaningful albums that came out before I got into metal. Um, that I don't have anything to do with anymore. Um, but that's not to say that they didn't have a huge impact on me back when they did. Um, and then I've been thinking about doing a follow-up to that also that are like more specific albums that pertain to maybe kind of like me understanding who I am as a metalhead more than just identifying myself apart from being just your regular Joe Schmo into and getting into death metal and black metal um anyways this is Rascast, soul on ice um so back when i was getting into hip-hop 93 94 95 this came out originally in 95 on priority records that's like ice cube um i i could name another uh priority uh label mate but um, yeah, way back then I was getting into a lot of East Coast kind of stuff and the West Coast stuff that I was kind of into was a little more underground, a little less kind of, I guess it was, yeah, more underground, like hieroglyphics, stuff like that, Della Funky Homo Sapien. Um, this is kind of one of those albums that I felt like really should have blown up a lot more than it did. Um, it's got kind of a variety, a nice variety of all the kind of hip hop rap tracks that you would want to have on uh, 
early to mid 90s kind of record like this there's nothing fancy with this so it kind of blows it's not even a gatefold but it is two lps uh, but dude's an incredible lyricist uh and the uh the beats on this thing are just really really fun and this has just kind of been always one of those hallmark records that I wished I would have picked up a copy of way back in the day and I just kind of never got around to it that's that's kind of I guess the theme of this whole video was like albums I never really got around to picking up and now that we're in a fucking COVID epidemic I am for some reason Rascast So on Ice um I don't know a couple more CDs I waited for fucking ever for these to come in from Brazil I wasn't sure if these were going to be bootlegs or what. Turns out they were uh, reissues, so I'm kind of happy that I didn't buy some pieces of shit. But these were both put out by Marquee Records out of Brazil in 2017. This is The Shadowland by Inverted. This was a Swedish band, and this originally came out... Um, pulling this out of my ass here. Gotta stop doing this. I'm going to say 94. Um, don't know much about these guys. I'm. This is my first foray into listening to Inverted. The reason I bought both of these, I believe, is because they originally were released on Shiver Records, um, which has a pretty killer discography, but also some things that I weren't aware of, that wasn't aware of. So I wound up just kind of picking this up on a whim. Not as great as I would have expected it to be. Honestly, I was kind of hoping for something kind of more just beefy and guttural and satanic i don't think this is remastered because it honestly sounds kind of weak and kind of compressed and not so great maybe that's exactly how it sounds originally uh there's a bonus track on here if that's worth talking about across the lake of flames from the shiver records compilation sometimes death is better <laughs> than what i also picked up so Caducity have another album that I listen to kind of often on YouTube. Can't think of what it's called, but it has riffs all over it. But I wound up picking up, I believe this is the debut from Caducity. Um, this is the, <laughs> not sure how to pronounce this. I don't know. That's pretty easy to read, but uh, yeah, uh, that doesn't do anything for me. This is way weirder than I expected it to be. Um, this the closest, really, comparison I could make is this is kind of like a death metal Balsagoth. The vocalist on here is doing everybody a disservice. Uh, it is fucking bizarre. If you uh, wound up subscribing as a result of our live stream the other day, welcome. I appreciate it. And uh, I do leave links down below to every album that I talk about in my videos. I feel like I'm really uh, dragging my feet here. A couple of bangers left here. Um, I hope you're all aware of this. I hope you already have copies of this. If not, get the fuck on this bandwagon. Especially Ken from Ken's Death Metal Crypt. This is for you. You might, you probably actually are have an original copy of this demo tape, but Vehement Thrower, I Come in Peace. Nuclear War Now Productions just reissued this adding the demo Worm from 91. So this was an obscure Polish uh, death metal band and I Come in Peace originally came out in 93 and it is mwah, so fucking good. Um, it's just God, it's, it's really hard to describe this. Um, I tried to pull out a couple of albums that I thought were like Kind of alongside this kind of stuff similar to this kind of stuff it's not dissimilar to a ton of bands but it's kind of really hard to explain how fun this is to listen to for its absolute relentless mediocrity it's so fun and so i wound up trying to think like okay what does this sound like what albums do i already have that I'm not listening to that sound like Vehement Thrower because I had such a fucking fun time listening to this. So like, I really appreciate that Yusuka and Nozli were now are reissuing lost fucking gems like this. By the way, I checked out a band that is post Vehement Thrower. I believe they were just called Vehement. And it is the weirdest fucking thing I've heard in 
10 years probably. It is just absolutely bizarre. The album was called Born, and it came out on cassette in, I think, 96. Uh, if you have a copy of it, I would love to trade or buy a copy of it off of you. Um, but anyways, that's neither here nor there. Or even if you have an uh, MP3 of it, I'd love to hear it. Vehement Thrower, I Come In Peace, super, super fun. So anyways, I tried to think, like, what does this sound like? What are the crappy death metal albums that kind of are like this? So, um... One of the things I picked out was this Maleficarum, and I kind of feel like I'm right. It sounds like post Cannibal Corpse and Deicide, post like 91 Florida kind of death metal stuff, but it sounds very European. Um, <clears throat> so I picked up this Maleficarum, not that they're from Europe, but just kind of that mid-era kind of where, where death metal was kind of tapering off, but there's some stuff there that's worth revisiting, like Vehement Thrower. Um, that crematory compilation that Necroharmonic put out a couple of years ago um, sounds a lot like a vehement thrower as well. Um, it's just good, good stuff. Pick this up. Um, I think Head Split has it for really cheap, but Nuclear War Now isn't charging, I think, more than 10 or 11 bucks. Anyways, um, <laughs> this is an album I did not spend $11 on. I was feeling kind of spry with the wallet. And I just bought the fuck out of this Nefandus, The Night Winds Carried Our Name. So I now have, I believe, all of the releases that Secula Delinda put out. Um, straight nerd shit right there. Um, so this is a Swedish band that came out in uh, 95, if I'm not mistaken. God, I've got to research what I'm talking about before. 96, before I do these videos. In perfect condition, Armageddon Shop. Mwah, I love you. Um, so I don't know. This is kind of like pre-orthodoxy Swedish black metal, um, just super obscure, rippy. I really wish this was remastered though. Um, but yeah, I was willing to fucking shell out thirty-five bucks for this thing, and I don't regret it. Super fun, evil, nasty Swedish black metal. Um, if you're nuts about like the first Watane, um, a lot of that kind of stuff coming out, Nefandis, mm, so good. Or like Slopemine, awesome. Also been meaning to pick this up for a really long time. Um, as you might know, I'm really good friends with Austin of Panopticon and I first met him uh, after he had left Anagnorisis and started doing his solo project, which became Panopticon. And I never really wound up getting a copy of the Overton Trees. He only played on one of their albums, and then he quit. Um, so this was their only release that Austin was on. They wound up putting on another couple of full lengths that were killer. Um, saw them live at Gilead Fest a couple years ago. But this uh, doesn't sound anything like Panopticon. But if you know Austin like I do, it's... It's pretty fun to go back and kind of hear what this is like. I maybe had a download of this forever and ever and ever ago. Um, by the way, I think the band offers this for free on their band camp, so you can have a copy of it. Um, it definitely sounds like Anthems to the Welcome at Dusk. Um, that must have been like right on the tip of all their tongues at this very moment in time. It came out in 2007, um, and it's... I guess it's like Emperor with maybe twice as many fucking dive bombs. Um, it's unrelenting, pummeling, full of energy. These guys were full of fucking piss and vinegar at the time. There is, there is so literally, like I can't believe how little this sounds like Panopticon. Um, so Austin played guitar and sang in this band, um, and he wrote all the songs um, at, uh, collaboratively as a band. I, I don't want to take credit away from potentially other members of the band, but um, yeah, that's just what it is. I'm kind of a collector of all the stuff that he has done to an extent, so I'm happy to have a copy of this finally. Overton Trees by Anagnorisis. <clears throat> Next, I bring you a couple of LP reissues that are fucking crucial. I got these all from cwproductions.net. Again, I'm not fucking paid to plug anything, any band, any anything, or uh, distro or website or anything. 
Um, but I bring this up because these were very affordable and the the label uses midi mail to send LPs, which I think is fucking brilliant. I paid $5 and some change to have three LPs shipped to me. And these are, uh, <laughs> shuffling these around left and right. High Roller reissued a lot of these um, with bonus seven inches a couple of years ago. So I was just kind of farting around looking and seeing what there was. I have been kicking tires on this debut EP from Warlord Deliver Us for years now. And it's kind of hard to find a copy at like under $20 on CD. Um, and LP, not even so easy either. Um, so I finally just fucking found cwproductions.net uh, and I was so pleased with what I got. These are remastered and this has a bonus. There's a lot of stuff in here so I kind of want to hurry up. Bonus 7 inch there with a couple of tracks from the Metal Massacre thing. Just a single LP. So Deliver Us was actually a six song EP. <clears throat> but it's so good, it's worth considering it as a uh, debut full length. Just just a little on the short side, but man. Oh, it also came with this amazing fan photo. Upside down. <laughs> Upside down again. Um, traditional heavy metal, uh, which I, I'm really, really picky about. So if you're at all curious about this, that should tell you something poster of the otherwise mediocre album cover but warlord were so fucking atmospheric and melodic and memorable even got a lyric sheet to it and a high roller catalog so if if you know anything high roller does fucking awesome jobs at reissuing a lot of this kind of traditional heavy metal um but there's just something about warlord man the way the singer just blasts I, I don't know. I, I don't listen to this kind of stuff very often, so it's not like I'm going to be able to say what this is, how this is so different from other bands of this ilk. But man, just when he shreds into these solos and the singer is just wailing, it's so passionate, it's so believable, it sounds so honest for uh, a heavy metal band. Warlord, Deliver Us. I love this. So they did another album after that called The Cannons of Destruction Have Something or Other. That's the next Warlord I need to get. But uh, I believe the guitar player, Bill Samus, started working on a solo project early, early, early on while he was working on Warlord material. Um, and these, this was kind of different. This was... He, he had like this female vocalists sing and ordinarily I don't bother making a distinction in gender when talking about a singer but she sings in a way that reminds me of something kind of outside of music it kind of it, it seems like it's upon a mountain or inside of a cave or something and she's like this apparitional sort of half spoken kind of mysterious vocal style you gotta hear it, man. It's so evocative. It's so unique. It's so just honest, also. Um, yes, I know a lot of you guys will say, fucking Christians. Bill Samos was a Christian. Warlord was a Christian metal band. So is Lordian Garden. Like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care what these songs are about. Um, this stuff rules. The shredding going on all over the place is so good. The cheesy drum machine. Oh, it's There's just so much to be digging into here. This is Woe to the Inhabitants of Earth. Um, originally came out in 95, but he worked on these songs for years and years and years. And in fact, if you're a huge Lordian Guard nerd, maybe huger than I am, there is also an LP reissue of the demos of uh, this early stuff. Um, I didn't wind up picking that up, but it was called Lordian Winds. Bonus seven inch on this. Um, no poster this time, but lyric sheet <clears throat> and red vinyl. Um, yeah, I just, I have loved Lordian Guard for years and years and years. In fact, my buddy Ron played me this stuff before I ever heard Warlord. And I just always liked this a little bit more. The cheesiness in the vocals and the drum machine and the synth. Um, so, so good. As my good buddy Tanner coined it today, he says this is the genesis of castle metal. 
Um, so if you're an Obsequii fan and you're very curious about um, one of the big influences in the genesis of castle metal and what became of uh, Obsequii, look no further than Lodian Guard. Good, good fucking stuff. So, I'm happy with this pile. I love this stuff. I'm going to be listening to this stuff for quite a while. Thank you for joining me again, and we'll see you next time.